Hello everyone. Today I will speak about enhancement for analytical modeling automation in Revit 2025.2. So here they have created a new script, and in this script it's really engineering mindset. It means that it will, based on kind of here, try to auto align on level on grids elements for the whole building. And so it will create a better analytical element. If you want to have more detail than what I will present, you will have the help, here the help at the top of the Dynamo script and you can edit by default the Dynamo script. So what kind of AI? It means that it will analyze the selection you want to create the analytical element and it will find, I would say, line or alignment line. It means that if there is grid, it will be aligned on grids or reference plan. If they are not, it will create, I would say, fake uh, axes to align on it. It's what you can see in red, in uh, elevation or in plan view like this. So if you have, I would say, level very close because you have the finish of the slab and the finish of the floor. Here you can check structural, it will give more weight. And so the analytical model will go on the level which is check structural. So detail what it means. So here now you have factor for column and walls. Here you have a uh, walls and a column, which for example is three meter. So if you select like by default this value, you see it will multiply the length of the wall and the column selected, each one, by the level. Of course, here my wall and column are the same, so it gives about one meter. So on beam, same how to align on a level, it will find the size of the beam, h, and with this size, it will multiply the height by what you select. For example, by default, it's one, so it will be one. But you can change with here the value. Same for floor, you will have 20 centimeters, for example, for a, sl a slab. And so if you select one by default, it will, it will be one multiplied by 0, 02. So here, for example, if you have some floor Mm, very close, but for analysis, you want to align all, you can uh, increase this value. So after you have the same kind of spirit for horizontal uh, alignment. So what I speak previously was for elevation, for level, as you can see. So here, what it means, it means that if you uh, put 0 0.3, it means that it will be very close from what you have drawing, what you have designed. Okay. For example, here less than three, you have this. Okay. Starting than three, my two walls of eight meters view in a plan view, which are about more than half a meters um, not synchronized. It's more than three. It's a line. Less than three, it's not a line. So. You have to maybe select element by element to see if it's fit. And you can, uh, for example, select one part, create, select the second part, and it will be connected, of course. What is not auto align is the slab. So for the slab, you will need to edit boundaries like it is. Um, for slab and for rafter, okay which is a kind of slab and uh, not that um, arc curved beam will be generated if it's really curved but if it's spline beam or curved wall it can't be generated automatically okay so just here you have so it's nice to have the axes because you can see them in 3d view okay and you can see it's its floor so you will select and you will edit boundaries. Yeah, I remove the physical one. You will edit boundaries and you will align like this. 
and then you will validate. Okay, so it's super fast. And even if you have, I would say, a, a strange wall like I've created here, okay, it will be kept. For example, here I select so it's a line, okay. I've created openings inside the shape, inside the wall. It's keep, of course, it's transcript because the wall is not a line. And uh, same for the wall, for the windows and the doors here. It's uh, in. The only thing is, of course, due to the um, factor you select before, here it go on my level. You know, the top of the wall like this, it don't follow this, which can be nice or not, but it's to explain. Um, small cutout made by the structural join in physical element are ignored. Okay. So if you, for example, you have two blocks, okay, it's nice to generate each block individually because since uh, they are not connected uh, in real, but if you select them all together, uh, uh, EI will try to align elements which shouldn't be aligned, I would say. So you, you, it's better to select one, this one, create, select this one, create, and then you select the bottom and you create. Okay, when you have done that, well, I like to send to robot to see if it's connected or not, but before that, you can uh, have a filter to see if it's connected or not. Okay, and at the end, uh, sometimes it will work, you can look graphically. If there is elements who are not aligned or who have some problem, who are not created, here you have at the bottom the log file, which is a text file, and you can open it, and after you will have the what is not correct, and you have the ID. So you can copy past this and select in Revit by ID, which was good and not so good. So now let's move to the demo part, where I will go from Revit to Revit analytical model to robot. Okay, so <clears throat> let's start. So at first, what I will do, I will uh, delete uh, my analytical here, I have nothing. So I will display all except the slab, the floor. Okay, because we will do in a second time. So I select all, as you can see in factor, I have led what is by default, because as you can see for a classic building, it's fine. If I would say you have different pieces or really huge beam, maybe you can select and do in a second way, like this to change parameter. So here, as you can see, I delete some of my axes and in fact, it's all aligned. You will see, I will recreate them after because it's quite useful because you know where you want to put all, but it has been cre created automatically uh, by groups with kind of IA to align all elements. So here, if you don't see the openings because there is a checkbox, here I have the openings. So you can have a look. So there is no automatic, uh, I would say, alignment for openings. So here, as you can see, my openings are really close uh, to the element, but now you have grips, you can directly move them like this here. And it's linked to a Windows, which is copy monitor, so I can't uh, move the windows, of course. Well, you could have a first look before sending to robot with nodes as a filter if they are connected or not, but what I prefer to send to robot and to launch a direct mesh. So with the mesh, you can see if it's connected or not. At, well, it's the same idea, I would say. Here and here, you can see it's quite fine. Of course, I have multiple uh, Windows copy monitor, but it's fine for robot. Here you can see. So now the vertical element, well, I could put uh, support to see if I have result, but if I like, I have a look there, I have something strange. Yeah, I think 
one of my panel is copy monitor with a strange shape so I will update it same here this wall is copy monitor from the architectural file so I will display it and I will uh, redesign the shape because if not well I could have changed analytical element and I will reconnect because the join was not allowed here it is so here since I have the selection I can run it again you put in right frame so I delete the old one I run and by the way when you run this it will take into account all uh, around so it's even better here it seems it's okay so I send it again so I prefer to close a robot I don't want to update, I want a new file here. So, and after I verify. So I send again. Okay, I do a mesh. And it's fine. Okay. So of course you can always have a better analytic element, but here it's fine. So now I will uh, activate my slab. Well, I could have done a vertical analysis on wall, beams, column. So here I add my slab and I reselect all again Oop, with the same parameter. Here I run. Uh, to be able to manage a color, here I create some filter. Uh, if I take, for example, floor. Here it's analytical panel to control flow. Okay, uh, flow panel after a number and primary is both wall it's panel etc. Okay, okay. So here I can see it. So now I will go uh, here and here what you see it's not connected okay so here you can see that the the wall are connected here if i select the wall because it's on axis but slab are not so what you will do it's select edit and here you can put here validate and what is faster, it's you put all what you have in a region like this until you don't have. See, uh, what you could is uh, remove the, um, the wall, for example, if you want to be sure to have only the element here. Just when you do the selection, here you can see the even if it's not checked, the structural, when I select, since I select the wall, I don't do a, a check based on this, so you need to uncheck. So here I will uh, delay it because it's not. After you have done this, you could have a look as all is aligned in this direction, in this direction, and in the other one here. And after uh, you will, you can have a filter, so I can view with new filter to see if nodes are connected or not. So here we'll add the filter here, so connected or not. And by the way, you are not obliged to to display the connected node here. And after here you can have a look. So no problem. So now. Uh, before sending to robots, since it's quite finalized, I will put my support uh, in Revit. So I will uh, put the spring value, I would say in Z value 50,000 and uh, less in the two other direction. And I will put support for the uh, small column and the linear uh, support for the wall. And 
that's all. So now you guess, I will send to robot. Okay, and now I will do the analysis. Then I have the support. Okay, so after what is important, it's uh, to go in result and to look at the global deformation. Well, here there is uh, only uh, it's connected. If not, we will have a message. And what I like to look at it's a global Z on self weight here to see. Yeah, here four millimeters, it's quite usual. And to see if we have connection between that and that, you know. Here it's, I think it's fine to, to see here. I will cut in this view. Yeah, it's, we see it's connected. Thank you for watching.